Hello summoners and welcome to another episode of Pro Guys' Best Champions to Main, now in patch 1215. The champs we pick for this series are strong picks with high performance but have low, low ban rates and are unlikely to be nerfed anytime soon. They are reliable picks for climbing and are worth investing your time in. We also have a series that covers the most broken contested picks in each row, so be sure you're subbed to the channel so you don't miss out when we post those as well. We'll start things off in the top lane with Olaf. While he's not quite as OP as he was right after his mid-scope update, he still carries pretty hard and is a lot less contested. That means he fits perfectly with the theme of this video. When you pick him, your game plan is simple, split to win. Olaf's biggest weakness is being kited to death in 5v5s, so the solution is to just avoid teamfights in almost all cases. So just plant yourself in a side lane and run over your foe over and over again. Before we go any further, I just want to give a shout out to our coaches over at ProGuides.com. Our meta videos and guides like this are a great way to give you a push in the right direction. But if you're super serious about climbing, you'll want to go check those guys out. They're all top level players, available 24-7 and just waiting to share everything they know with you. So stop grinding your face into the wall alone and head on over for some professional help to ProGuides.com. Now let's continue with the guide. The next top laner we have for you is Sejuani. At this point, I think it's time to stop calling Sejuani top an off meta pick. I mean, it's just the better role for the champion. She can either win lane or at least go even in most matchups, scales well as both a split push threat and a strong team fighter. This makes her really safe to blind pick every single game. As with pretty much any tank these days, if you want to build even more aggressive, you can sneak in a demonic embrace into her build somewhere. This is especially good against other tanks or juggernauts. Our final top laner for today is Trindamir. A lot of people think Trind is a click and pray type of champion, and when you see how many of them just froth for the level 1 or 2 all in, the second they fill up their fury, it kinda makes sense. But in reality, like with any carry, playing Trindamir isn't that simple. I mean, you can bank all of your games on just going in and critting on enough of your hits, but that's the definition of coin flipping your games. Against a low threat target, that's fine. But if you spin on a toughy one like Darius or Jax and you give them an early lead, your game is over. Instead, play Trindamir with some fundamental skills like actually managing the wave, trading at appropriate times and going for an all in when you have a good HP advantage. When you do that, you actually get consistent early leads and then you can turn into a frother and just ghost at your opponent every time it's up. Taking a look now at our junglers, the first pick we have is Volibear. Volibear was pretty much the sole god tier jungler for most of the season, but after a hefty nerf not that long ago, he was reeled into a bit of a healthier place. Now that Riot has put more value on Dragons and Rift Heralds, junglers that have a lot of influence on early are heavily rewarded, especially those that can solo the epic monsters with ease. With Voldy, having very simple, easy to pull off ganks and strong dueling makes it impossible for most junglers to contest him 1v1, and so he checks all the boxes. While he's definitely a very, very beefy boy that makes for a great frontliner, he's also a surprisingly high damage threat, so you never feel like you're just relying on your team to do the carrying. Next, we have Trundle. While Voli was the good all-arounder pick, Trundle is the one you want to go with when your goal is basically to entirely shut down the enemy jungler. With his AD stealing Q, the list of champions that can fight Trundle head-on is pretty slim. The only tough matchups he really has are ranged champions that keep him from ever actually getting in range. This allows you to easily secure scuttle crabs and even bully your opponents off of their camps. Closing out games with Trundle is a bit different compared to other picks. You don't generally want to go and force 5v5 since Trundle is super kiteable. Instead, try to keep the map broken up and go for duels and small skirmishes because that's where he really shines. The final jungler we have is Amumu. He's pretty much the polar opposite of Trundle. You'll have no inclination towards scrapping with the enemy jungler, at least early on. Instead, you'll power farm and look to gank when enemy laners are too far pushed up. Once you have your ult, you can start forcing really hard. There's often a lot of debate about the impact that the jungle role has on games. The big issue is that it can have so much impact on how lanes play out. How much carrying power should the champions in it have? 
and a lot of people really want jungle to go back to being a more supported role where they get lanes ahead but can't just snowball off of it and also be huge carries themselves. And that brings us to today's question of the day. How do you think jungling should be balanced? Whether you like how it is now or you have some adjustments you would like to make, let us know your answer down in the comments below. For me personally, I just wish both styles were viable and too bad we don't have enough supportive style champions to really allow for that. If you're thinking of a supportive style jungler, you're really just looking at Ivern. If we enabled more of that kind of champion, I think there would be a easier line to draw in the sand, whether it's a carry jungle or a support jungle. But that's my answer and we want to hear from you. Next up for the mid lane, the first pick we have is Heimerdinger. We keep saying it, but his 12-12 buffs have made him an absolutely ridiculous pick. He is destroying in all four laning roles, and at this point, I wouldn't be surprised if there was just some way to make him work as a jungler too. Another mage that works well for skipping through laning phase is Xerath. Mid lane can be a pretty volatile play since most of the champs here have a lot of snowball potential, but when you're playing a guy that can insta clear waves and trades from halfway across the screen, you eliminate a lot of that risk. Our one little tip for Xerath is that you don't have to stay planted in the mid lane for all of the laning phase. Most people don't think to roam with an artillery mage, but you can definitely move down river a bit and give an ult to help your bot lane win an all in. The third mid laner for today is Pantheon. His selling points are as follows. Hard wins trades with point and click combos, easily 100 to zeros foes with ganks from a jungler, and can snowball insanely hard if you get an early lead. So if you like a snowball-y hard carry in the mid lane playstyle of an assassin, but want to do so on a very low risk, easy to pull off champion, you should really consider picking Pantheon up. Moving things down to the bottom lane, the first pick we have is Seraphine. After all the meta shifts, as well as nerfs to her and enchanter items, Seraphine in mid and the support role have definitely fallen off. But she's still very good as a bot lane carry. Traditional AD carries just don't have the means to bully her early on, so you'll pretty much always safely scale up with her and have a massive impact in teamfights. Our second pick is Kog'Maw. We thought that Enchanters being blanket nerfed last patch would make Kog a weaker champion, but the bot lane meta really hasn't changed that much at all, and he's still a very strong yet underpicked champion. It's hard to be sure why he isn't abused more, but I think a lot of it comes from people thinking that he's some helpless, weak early game champion, but really, when you trade around his W, Kog'Ma is actually pretty strong in lane and easily has the tools to reliably make it out of lane and hard carry games. The final bot lane carry we have for today is Ash. She's a pretty strong lane bully with both good poke and all in. Her damage scales surprisingly well and she brings a lot more utility than any other marksman. If you have the mechanics to orb walk even halfway decently, she's also impossible for most threats to actually reach in teamfights, especially when you pair her with the first support we have on our list. It's Janna. Even after all the nerfs directly aimed at her and the Enchanter class as a whole, Janna is still a contender for top 3 supports in the game. She's got a really good, safe early game, good roaming, and has an incredible amount of impact in teamfights. A lot of people are turned off by the low skill floor Enchanter, seeing it as a blow to their ego to play them or something, but honestly, there are some really high skill cap things you can do with Janna. Just being able to predict a tornado of max charge in a teamfight is enough to win you an entire 5v5. Besides, in rank, you should be playing what's good and gets you wins, not just what's flashy. Our second support to main is Tarek. The fact that his pick rate is low enough to be on this list is crazy. Usually, when a champion is around a 54 to 55% win rate, everyone is jumping on it, but Tarek remains criminally underpicked. He does have a bit of an unorthodox playstyle since you have to get used to autoing to reset his spells and learning to cast abilities off your allies. But once you get that down, he's just an incredibly powerful pick and one that every support player should be trying to abuse right now. Finishing off our list, we have Soraka. Out of all the enchanters, we thought surely she would be the one that's hit the hardest. After all, she's the one that truly leans on her heels to be useful in fights, with her only other utility being her E. 
but she's still going really strong. I guess what you have to realize is that her heals were so over the top that even a pretty significant nerf is still going to leave them in a really good place. And that is it for our top three champions to main on 1215. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to subscribe so you never miss out on our meta guides and so you're always in the loop on what the best picks are. Remember to let us know how you feel about jungle balance down in the comments below. And one last thing, don't forget to check out our Discord in the description box below where you can discuss League further or just hang out and be a part of our community. I can't wait to see you guys back for the next video, but until next time, good luck on the rift and may the LP God smile down upon you.